Are you, are you ready, Mr. Magaziner? Yeah. Mr. Magaziner, you're recognized for five minutes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Congressman Luttrell and I have been waiting for this day for a long time, so. And you get I'm to witness that you and tell all your it. friends that this is the future of Homeland right here. Yeah. Um, you're going to get us in trouble. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, thank you again, and uh, thank you, Admiral. Uh, Rhode Island, of course, has a long, rich history with the Coast Guard, which maintains an active presence in our state, conducting search and rescue missions, protecting our waters from environmental contamination and illegal fishing, among uh, other uh, important uh, missions. And uh, I'm very proud that as of 2022, two additional Coast Guard cutters, the uh, Tahoma and the Campbell, uh, now call Newport home, and we are very proud and, and grateful for that. Um, uh, one issue that we are having in Rhode Island as relates to the Coast Guard has to do with the availability of housing. Um, I have heard from constituents, from Coast Guard service members, who are having a hard time finding housing uh, in the region, and particularly in the Newport area, where they have to compete with like the vacation rental market uh, and other factors. And I know that this is not an isolated experience. 41% of U.S. Coast Guard units are located either in remote areas without a lot of housing stock or in va high vacation rental areas like in Newport. So can you talk about how the Coast Guard is managing the housing program and what we as members of Congress can do uh, to help you in those efforts? Thank you. Uh, housing is obviously a challenge for the workforce as we transfer them every several years. And uh, Newport is no exception to the, the challenge in finding uh, housing. Uh, we work to exercise all of our authorities with regard to housing and so approach it from a diversified standpoint. And where Congress can help is ensuring we've got adequate uh, housing allowance reimbursement for the workforce so they can actually access the housing. We're working to exercise long-term leases to provide better predictability for people and obviously rely on uh, military bases and some of the public-private venture housing there. And I know uh, all of those are uh, leverages that we use both in Newport and across, across the country to support our personnel. Thank you. And we've heard a little bit already about the, um, uh, the staffing shortages, uh, the personnel shortages that the Coast Guard is facing. One of the impacts of that has been the, um, uh, the reduced service at the uh, Castle Hill Station in Newport. And so I'm wondering if you can give us a sense of what the timeline might be to returning to a full level of operation there and what needs to happen in order to get that done. Yeah, Station Castle Hill was one of the stations that we moved to scheduled mission only. It reflects the shortfall in non-rated and junior personnel that we're managing as a service. Uh, that shortfall is currently about 2,300 people. Uh, I shared earlier that we have uh, gained ground on our recruiting and recruiting challenges, and we, at this point in the year, have uh, the number of reservations uh, that, that we need to sort of stop uh, the growth in losses. It is going to take us time to, to build back, and uh, we will continue to keep our foot on the gas to ensure that we're recruiting any and all who want to serve this incredible uh, organization and look forward to working with you and this committee to ensure that we've got all of the right investments for, for recruiting so we can continue to grow. Thank you. And, and of course, I think part of how we address recruitment is by making sure that the Coast Guard is seen as a place that is uh, welcoming to everyone. Uh, you reference the issues with sexual assault at the academy in the 80s and 90s. Can you just talk a little bit about what protocols, what programs have been put in place to ensure that that culture remains in the past and is no longer present going forward? We've made an incredible number of investments in the organization and, and today are not the same organization that we were in the 80s and 90s. Sexual assault's a crime, it's investigated as a crime and committed to ensuring that there's full accountability when a crime occurs. Work we're doing around service culture today that we've moved out on aggressively is to ensure that the culture is intolerant of any harm whether it's the crime of sexual assault, hazing, bullying, uh, retaliation, we've stepped into that work. I'm proud of the progress we're making and would welcome an opportunity to share with you in detail some of the investments we have made and additional investments we will need to ensure that we complete this journey. Thank you, Admiral. I yield back. Uh, 